I'm back with our third video in our sour beer series and this week we are having some fun showing you some of the ways Americans are going rogue with sour beers. Last week we talked classics, but today we are talking wonderfully not classic sour beers, highlighting some of the best American sour beers out there. Oh, and for this video we're definitely saving the most fun one for last, so make sure to stay tuned to the end. <laughs> So why are American sour beers such a mixed bag? Well, because craft brewers are doing crazy cool things and experimenting a lot. So it's hard to know what you'll get until you open it and taste it. While this may be bad news for easy classifications and identification if you're just starting to get into sour beers, it's very good news and exciting news for new beer and flavor profiles. All right, enough talking, let's get drinking. So this first American sour that we are checking out is Akimbo from Celador Ales in Los Angeles, California. And it's a table sour that's aged in Chardonnay barrels um, with peaches and then dry hopped as well. Um, so there's a lot going on with this one, which is a great example of some of this experimentation going on in um, American sours that I've mentioned. So when you take a sip of Akimbo, Mm. I really like this beer. I could, um, I could drink this for a while. <laughs> um, so if you're a wine lover, I do think you get a little bit of that like whiny, kind of yeasty, I, I don't know, there's something about it that does really remind me of that wine. You don't get a big punch of the peach. Um, you certainly, it is, I would not call this like a fruit beer, even though there is some fruit in there. Um, but it does, that sweetness from the peaches really kind of balances out that tartness. And this is probably around the middle of the tart scale, maybe low middle, not super tart. Yeah, but a little bit funky, pretty fun. So for beer number two, we're gonna stay on the wine trend. And what we have next is a Zinfandel Sour Ale from Cali Craft Brewing Company, um, their barrel project. And so this is aged in wine barrels with Zinfandel grapes. And look at the beautiful color on this beer. So this is, this is pretty jammy for a beer. And it's interesting, you know, I mean, when you talk about Zinfandel, you often use that kind of terminology of like very kind of red berries, jammy and you definitely get that in this, but not in a sweet kind of super fruity way. It has some nice tartness to it. It's a very well balanced sour. Um, this is um, also probably in that low medium, maybe even less sour than the last one that we just tried, the um, Akimbo. So a great one for starters and a great one if you love wine as well. Next up, we are heading to my home state of Massachusetts and heading on over to Springdale Brewery. So the beer we have from them is a, it's called No Fuzz, and it's a sour lager aged on nectarines. Um, and so this is pretty fun because it's fruity, it's funky, and it's sour. Um, so you get kind of a combination of all three here. So let's try this one out. So with this one, you definitely do get that bit of nectarine flavor, but it is also a little funky, kind of that like slight undertone of barnyard funk, not huge, not like super barnyardy or um, kind of farmhousey, but it is a little bit more complex. The tartness is not super extreme. It's probably that low mid again on the tartness level for this one. So lots of sours that we're finding for all of you sour skeptics out there. Ready for a hop sour? Here we are pouring um, Ale Song Brewing and Blending's Hop Farm. So this is an India, they call it an India farmhouse ale instead of an India pale ale. Um, and it's aged in oak and acacia barrels and conditioned with brett. So this one, let's take a little sip here. This one definitely has some more kind of funk to it. 
um, and as we talked about last week, or actually two weeks ago, the brett, um, that yeast, does really add a little bit more of that like kind of barnyardy, funky, sometimes even cheesy kind of flavoring to it, um, which I love. I just totally love because I think it gives it a little bit of depth and um, body kind of in your mouth. And so this is really nice. You can smell the hops on it when as you're about to take a sip. And it does, it drinks a little bit more like a kind of mild IPA um, than a sour. There is some slight kind of sour going on there, but it's not huge. Um, this would definitely be a great one to start with, especially if you like IPAs. Not super strong on the hop characteristic, also not super strong on the sour characteristic, but just a nice balanced melding of both. So with our sours so far, we've seen some of the traditional kind of fruits like raspberry being added um, and then we've seen some of the more popular fruits as well that are kind of stone fruits so the ap apricots nectarines things like that that are a little more mild in flavor now we're going to move on to a little bit of a bolder fruit um, that isn't quite as typical so here we are pouring a blueberry american sour and i love the can for this because it makes me think of willy wonk on the chocolate factory with the blueberry kind of exploding um, and mraz brewing company out in el dorado hills california so you can see this gorgeous color that the blueberries kind of add to this beer. And when you take a sip of it, you definitely get that blueberry. And this one's pretty tart. I wouldn't say it's like super high on the sour spectrum, but it is if you're sensitive to tart and or if you're a little skeptical getting into sours, this might not be where you want to start off. But the sweetness of the blueberry um, does really balance it out pretty nicely. So it's kind of your, your middle of the road sour, something that... I think would go amazing with cheeses. Um, yeah. Okay. I told you I was saving a fun one for last and I meant it. So thanks for sticking around. What I have here is a sour from a brewery in Oxford, Connecticut that I believe is one of the most fascinating and innovative breweries in the country, OEC Brewing. They only make sour and wild yeast beers and they do it with super old school brewing methods and materials. I mean, brewing approaches that are going back like hundreds of years and most of us have never seen or heard of. So I get pretty excited about OEC and I'm going to have to try to restrain myself here and stick to the facts and the beer we're talking about. But please make sure you don't miss our article all about OEC that we recently published on thecraftycast.com. They have such a cool story and are doing so many crazy interesting things. One example of that is demonstrated beautifully by this flagship beer. So what we have here is Tempest number nine, as indicated on the bottom of the label here. Each year's Tempest is numbered because no two Tempest beers will ever be the same, despite the fact that they are made in the same manner. Why? Well, because honestly, OEC takes kind of a winemaking approach to beer, which I love. So while Tempest will always be a blended sour saison, the blend will differ from year to year. This year, so Tempest number nine, it's 20% of a young Tempest beer that has been lagered for at least six months, blended with 25% 18-month-old Lambic-style ale, and 55% one-year-old Saison aged in red and white wine barrels. Like, what the what? I mean, come on! Each of those beers on their own would be delicious, and now they're blending them. So you can see how the variations and permutations if you're experimenting at this level could be endless. Hence, no two Tempest beers will ever be the same. To me, that is bold beer making since it's so counterculture. In wine, we're used to variation year to year, and I think it's pretty exciting that there are brewers out there starting to push consumers to expect this with beer as well. I digress. I knew I would do that with OEC. So the beer. Let's take a taste. Mm. So first, I just have to say that this is probably on the higher end of tartness from all the sours that we've tried today. Um, and it also has some of that funk kind of beneath the surface that I love that sometimes can be a little cheesy or a little barnyardy. This one's a little bit barnyardy. Um, and it really is just, you know, that classic saying of like a party in your mouth. Like that's kind of what's going on here because there is a lot going on in this beer. There's a lot of different elements with the some of the beer being aged in red and white oak barrels and, you know, kind of the young Tempest and other things going on. So it's really just a beautifully 
crafted and well-balanced sour beer and it's just such a special bottle and I also have a really special bottle that I'm saving for a little while to open that I tasted while I was at OEC and it's one of their sour beers that's actually blended with a sake um, from Japan and it's so funky and so cool and confusing to the palate a little bit because you don't see things like that very often um, and so when I open that I will definitely make sure to share that with you as well um, but OEC is just they make beautiful sour beers and are doing some really cool and amazing things all right so there you have it a tour of some of the crazy cool stuff American craft brewers are doing with sours and the end of our sour series for now best way to get to know them get out there and start drinking. And of course, let us know in the comments below what you find and think. Until next time, drink craft and drink local.